noise of it was just, it just hit you. And then two minutes later, they came back and Didi counted off one, two, three, four, and then went into Blitzkrieg Bob. really fast and really short songs and it, it was it was just very funny but they were very earnest about it it wasn't that you know they were trying to be funny they were really serious and so it was almost like you know conceptual art or something that it was just so great you you couldn't believe that you know it, it could exist it made you smile you know once you managed to close your mouth because <laughs> at first it was like that came up to us was Alan Vega from Suicide and said, you guys are great. This is what I've been waiting for. And I thought, this guy's nuts. <laughs> First fan. <laughs> I watched him, it's like I was laughing, you know, because I was more just a serious musician, you know, coming from the different groups I came from. And watching the Ramones, it was like, it's like a joke, really. <laughs> They had a sound problem, and Didi got all pissed off and took his bass guitar and threw it on the ground. And I think they walked off, and then they came back on. And that, that was exciting, too. I'd never seen any, any spontaneous uh, anger like that from anybody. And th that's what made me a little bit scared of them. You know, the famous thing about the Ramones is they would always stop and start you know, and have arguments on stage, which I always thought was pretty endearing. Lock. I don't want to get out of the basement! an original band, you know? You went to a stadium to see some big band. And you went, when you went to a bar, they played cover tunes, you know? So actually seeing guys who wrote their own music and, and did their own thing and wore black leather jackets and, you know, it was kind of amazing. I felt, my God, this is it. CBGB's was about 100 people, and four of those people were the Ramones, and five of those people were the people in Blondie, and do the math, as they say, and uh, there was a few other bands, and that's who was there. Everybody would hang out outside of the club, and it was, a, you know, there was like, a, I guess, a decent kind of camaraderie to some degree. CBGB's, like, I, I remember, like, the early bands there, it was getting to be a nightmare, you know, the competition. Well, with the Mumps, uh, Mink DeVille, the Marbles, all these, these jerk-off bands, you know, like, thought they were, like, big stars, and they weren't. The Ramones were the stars, you know, and, and like, we were very standoffish and very snobby, so we irritated the hell out of everyone. We're the Ramones, and you're a lad, man, baby, you better shut it up. One, two, three, four! <laughs> They 
their concept was very well defined. They were very organized. But yeah, they were like the military. They were. I mean, they really had a very clear vision, and it was very tight. <laughs> failure of the New York Dolls to achieve commercial success. Um, it was like a black cloud over New York, and nobody was going to be signed in New York. And um, more people started coming down to CBG because there was like an abundance of artists. Talking Heads are doing something totally different. Television, I didn't see it, no competition. Heartbreak is all a bunch of junkies, so um, I knew that their careers were going to be short. So. And around summer of 75, uh, there was a CBGB's Rock Festival. This was a big thing at the time. You know, uh, well, Rolling Stone's actually covering this, you know, and one page article and three quarters of the page was on the Ramones. At that point, then we started selling out once it was a Rolling Stones thing. You know, I'd shot the Ramones live once, mainly at CBGB's, but it was really early, and then it would, it would get so crowded you couldn't really do that anymore. <laughs> night, playing three nights in a row. We raised the price of the tickets. We were the first one raising it to $2 and $3 and $4 and $5. And we'd always try to take as much control, you know, get it away from Hilly and the crazy wife. Oh you know, yeah, we'd want someone at the door. We want to be cheated by them. Uh, we looked at this as a business right from right at that point. But we built a big following. We kept sending out invitations. Trying to get Danny Fields come down. We thought, because uh, of his history, he worked for the Doors and he worked for uh, the Stooges and he worked for the MC5. So I figured with those credentials that this guy, maybe if anybody's going to see what we're doing, it would be Danny. Danny Fields came down eventually, and uh, I think he w he didn't want to come down because he thought we were like a Spanish band or something, for like a flamenco band. Or something. So I went to see them the next time they played. And, oh, this is just everything. No guitar solos. The songs are over so fast. They're all so cute. They look great. I love what they're wearing. And I just said right away, I want to be your manager. So they said, uh, oh, well, we need a few thousand dollars for a drum kit. If you come up with that, you can be our manager. OK. <laughs> He knew all those people, I mean, as far as cool people, not anybody's going to help us with our career, but, you know, he always knew all those Andy Warhol people. And so, mm -hmm. so all those people started coming down. To me, it was just like a bunch of freaks, and uh, I wouldn't be very sociable or friendly to these people. Uh, I just came off as unfriendly and nasty, which they, they were fine with. Uh, they probably wanted the abuse. You know. And this was my first part. I got a deal. I think Patty had a deal, I think. I mean, that was the first thing you had to do. I remember playing at Mother's, this must be later on in 75. Then Craig Leon brings down Linda Stein. I guess eventually it leads to getting Seymour Stein to come see us. Danny organized a rehearsal at SIR Studios. They did their set, probably took 15 minutes. And that was it, Seymour signed them. One, two, three, four. in the Ramones what I look for first in, in any artist that I, that, that I sign, which is great songs, because to me that is the most important thing. I mean, the Ramones, we all kind of shared um, a dark sense of humor, a dark, uh, a darkness, you know? My first album, Seymour comes down to the recording thing. He please start saying I'm a Nazi baby uh, on the front. Uh, you love tomorrow the world. I'm going, what's wrong with that, you know? And say, oh, come on, guys, please, for me, you know, change something, you know? 
and we have to reluctantly change it. So we're compromising ourselves, not singing I'm a Nazi baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah.